All right, well, thanks for the introduction and thanks everyone for being here. Uh, I know we only have a limited time, so we'll just jump right into it because I want to make sure I have some time at the end for questions. Uh, but as Heather mentioned, we're going to be talking about driving efficiency for your Stratasys printer. And specifically, we're going to be talking about FDM and PolyJet. Uh, but real quickly, John Strive, I'm with Post Process Technologies. I'm the business development manager for the Northeast. Um, so I'm typically the one that's out there meeting with companies, understanding the application, their workflow, uh, and discussing possibilities of um, maximizing efficiency, especially on that post printing end in their workflow. Uh, but here's a quick look at today's agenda uh, and what I'll be speaking to. Uh, first, I'll be talking about today's additive workflow and its dirty little secret. Uh, anyone who's been in the industry for a little while, you probably already know exactly what that is uh, because it comes up often, and that is the post printing step, right? The support removal and surface finishing. Um, after kind of looking at the industry as a whole, I'm going to zero in at looking at traditional um, post printing methods for polyjet support removal and FDM, their limitations and their costs associated with that. Then I'll be jumping in and talking about the benefits of going to an additive design solution for FDM and PolyJet. And finally, what that means for the digital thread and kind of the, the industry 4.0 that I'm sure are terms you guys have heard uh, in the past. So today's additive workflow. For those of you who are already printing, this is probably already very familiar to you. But as you look at the workflow of today, you know, there's really that design phase, build phase, and that post print phase. And that post print phase is honestly one of the biggest afterthoughts in the industry, right? Probably the most neglected um, stage in all the workflow here. Anyone who's been to Rapid or AMUG, any of those additive shows, you know that a lot of time, money, R&D has gone into the design and build phase, right? I mean, every six months, SolidWorks, other software companies are coming out with updates to design your parts better, more efficiently, limit supports. Then you get to the build side, right? There's new printers being able to print faster, bigger, new materials, and you get to that post print side and it really has been um, neglected, right? Printer OEMs, companies, they're still using the same methods that they've been using for the last 20 years, uh, which is usually something from traditional manufacturing eh, that kind of works at removing supports, so they ported it over to printing. And that is really what has caused some of today's biggest challenges in additive, right? The post printing has become the bottleneck. You can now print faster, print more parts, but when you get to the post printing, things start to slow down, right? Especially for something like PolyJet, for instance. Anyone who's printing in PolyJet knows it's a very manual process. One person in front of one part cleaning. So you can print dozens, hundreds, thousands of parts a day now, but it's still being slowed down because someone has to touch every single part. So it's time consuming, it's inconsistent, you get high breakage rates, uh, and it can be expensive, which we'll talk about a little bit more today. Uh, at post process, uh, we do some surveys on the market, especially to understand what companies biggest pain points are surrounding that post printing step. So this is from a survey we did back in 2020 um, and it's inhibitors to workflow maximization. So basically, what, what are people's biggest problems with their post printing methods of today? I'm sure anyone who's printing today, a lot of these resonate with you. Um, top reason we see is length of time to finish parts. I probably see that almost every time I talk to a company for the first time, right? I mean, the beauty of additive is that you can print faster, you can get parts easier and faster than you would with traditional manufacturing. So if the post printing has become the bottleneck and is now slowing you down, that's the biggest problem, right? You might be able to print a part in eight hours, but then it's gotta go sit in a tank for 24 hours, then it's gotta get out of the tank and dry for two days. So now the length of time to finish parts has really increased um, to, to what you would want it to be. Consistency of finished parts, that's another big one, especially for anything that requires manual labor. I see that all the time, right? If you have a hundred of the same part, and even if they go to the same person for some type of manual work, you're going to get a hundred different parts by the end of it. But this is the nature of manual labor. Um, skilled labor being used for non additive activities. I'm sure many of you have experienced this, you know, cleaning parts, surface finishing parts. It's, you know, it, it's not a super fun job to do. Very manual, 
just kind of doing some simple tasks. And oftentimes we have engineers who you know are getting paid to do design work, solve problems, and they're the ones that are having to do this. Um, throughput limitations, damaged parts, and other. So uh, hopefully that kind of gave you some insight into the industry as a whole uh, of post printing and, and why that's become the bottleneck. Next, let me dig into specifically FDM and PolyJet print technologies, um, what their limitations are, and really the, some of the biggest costs that are associated with that. So in that same survey we did back in 2020, um, same thing, these are some of the biggest challenges that people see, but specifically for that print technology. So you see uh, PolyJet there on the left, uh, FDM on the right, but for PolyJet, number one challenge, length of time to finish parts. Uh, it's a huge issue, right? It's, it's a manual way to clean parts. If you have anything with internal geometries, it can take a long time. You know, I've seen anything from parts taking 30 seconds to clean to literally up to eight hours. Uh, if you have like something very intricate with internal geometries, long channels, that'll take a long time to finish parts. And it's always different, right? Depending on the part geometry. Uh, Consistency is another big one, as I just mentioned before, it's, it's manual labor. And then damaged parts for PolyJet, I actually see as, as a pretty big issue, right? I oftentimes talk to companies where they won't even print certain geometries on their printer because of their current way they, they remove supports is so um, aggressive that the parts will break. Like they can print it and it will survive, but they know when it gets to the cleaning step, it'll break. So now it's limited to applications they can do. Uh, for FDM, very similar length of time to finish parts. Although, uh, as you'll see here in a minute, FDM is already fairly automated, but it could be a long process, right? People are soaking parts for a couple of hours to a couple of days, and that really limits the benefit of getting a part off the printer quicker. Uh, damaged parts is another one, especially if you have thin walls and you're introducing a lot of heat, you're going to get warpage and then consistency. So those are some of the biggest issues. Let me kind of dig into what the current traditional way is to clean these print technologies in case you're not familiar. Um, but for PolyJet in particular, number one way to clean parts is with a water jet. If you haven't seen this before, basically you, you stick your hands in this glove port here um, and you have a little hose in there and you can adjust the pressure of the hose with a, usually like a, uh, a paddle by your foot and you're holding a single part and you're just blowing off that support material. Uh, this is by and far what most people are doing and it causes a lot of issues, right? As you heard me describe it, you can probably tell this is not a system that was specifically designed for additive. The water jet's literally been around for a hundred years, um, but it kind of works at removing support, so it was ported over, but there's some huge issues with that. One is long, unpredictable cycle times. Like I said, I've seen parts take 30 seconds and I've seen them take eight hours. It all depends on what the geometry is and really who's processing the parts uh, because manual processing requires a lot of tribal knowledge, right? Most places I go, they have that uh, water jetting guy, right? He's the one who's been doing it for years. He water jets for hours. He can look at a part off the printer and know exactly how long it will take him to do and he's not gonna have any breakages, uh, which can be a real issue if that guy is on vacation, he's sick or he leaves the company, right? I've seen uh, parts go from two minutes to clean to 20 minutes to clean with like 50% breakages because now they have a new guy on the water jet. Um, so breakage rate is quite high, significant labor, and it cannot fully clean parts, right? You got those internal geometries, you got those sections where um, you just can't water jet and it leaves support on the part. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the FDM support removal process, um, this is a typical way to do it. People will have some type of heated tank, like an SCA tank or maybe their own homemade tank. And then they use a detergent, either like waterworks or sodium hydroxide to dissolve the supports. So fairly automated, not as much labor as PolyJet, but still has its own issues because again, it wasn't specifically designed for additive. Kind of works, but it's just a tank with a heater um, and you're using some caustic material to eat away at supports. So it kind of has its own challenges. Um, long, unpredictable cycle times again, uh, although it is automated, the cycle times can be super long. I mean, I've seen a couple of hours to a few days, and that can be massive to someone's workflow if you have to wait days for a part to soak to get the support material out. And oh, by the way, once the part comes out, now it's completely saturated with detergent because it's just been sitting in this bath, and it's going to be sweating out the detergent, so now you have to wait for it to dry as well. 
Um, warping of thin walls is another one I see, especially if you leave these tanks on all day because you have parts in and out. You know, all of a sudden it's the end of the day, the tank's super hot, you start putting in your thin wall parts, they start warping. Uh, and then EHS safety concerns. I've actually seen this more and more an issue uh, in the Northeast, especially with bigger companies that have EHS departments. They hate working with systems like this, right? They're dumb tanks. They don't have sensors monitoring things where they can cut it off if it's working in an unsafe condition. They don't have e stops. Um, if you're using waterworks, you're having to mix a caustic powder with a water. Um, so now you're you you're worried about your guy having the right ratio. Um, caustic powder means you need a respirator, that type of thing. Um, and then high detergent swap outs. So. Well, that kind of gives you an idea of how people are currently post printing today for FDM and polyjet. What I next want to go over is the costs associated with that. Because uh, I find people are on different ends of the spectrum. You know, if I go to a service bureau, they usually do a pretty good job. They know exactly what the cost is per part down to the cent, right? They know if someone touches that part, whatever they're paying them an hour directly goes into the cost of that part. But I ran into other applications and companies where they're not really sure how much it costs them to post print the parts that they're printing. And I can tell you from experience that cost can be quite significant. So these are kind of six of the most often overlooked post printing costs. The first one is the opportunity cost of using manual labor. Uh, seems kind of basic at first, but I'll give you an example here, right? Polyjet, one person in front of one part. Whatever you're paying that person an hour, as soon as they touch that part, that cost now goes into that part, right? So it can add up quite quickly, especially if they're spending several minutes or even hours on a single part and they've got 5, 10, 20, 100 parts. There's a lot of labor associated with that. Um, and another thing that a lot of people miss with manual labor is it's not just what you pay that person an hour, it's the cost of burden to the company. So you're paying for taxes, uh, benefits, insurance, unemployment. So usually I see people use a 1.5 multiplier to whatever they're paying someone an hour because that's the burden onto the company. Um, reprints due to breakages, this is another big one. Uh, if you're expecting a 5% breakage or something like that and you have to reprint, what's the cost of the extra material you're using? What's the cost because you're using your printer more that you're now wearing away those consumable parts, uh, like the tips of the printer, right? Maybe you already plan for breakages, so you just print more parts at once. Well, now your tips are wearing away faster. You're using material um, and your machines in use, which means it's going to break down quicker. Those types of things all get associated with that reprint, not just the material cost. Uh, employee turnover and retraining. This is one that's often over missed, uh, missed, but I find that it's a significant cost, especially for something like water jetting, right? Super tribal knowledge. You got that water jetting guy who's been there for years. Well, if he leaves, there's now this huge cost because when you bring someone else new on, they have to be retrained on using the water jet, which can take a lot of time. And then they also have to get retrained for your company, right? There's all these things about getting someone to start your company for the first time. And then you got to train them on the water jet. Then they got to do it. And oh, by the way, if they're water jetting every day, people don't generally like to do that. So you probably have a lot of turnover. Uh, time loss getting part to customer hand. This is another one that's overlooked quite often, um, but it's a big part of the cost and it's really gonna be different for everyone. But the, the basic premise of it is, how much money are you losing because you're not getting a part in your customer's hand quicker, right? So, you know, maybe you're taking an FDM part and it takes, you know, uh, 10 hours to print, 24 hours to soak, and then two days to dry. So now it's taking you four days to get a part to your customer's hand. What if you could have done it in one day? You know, are you prototyping? So could you have gotten a product to market faster? Are you a service bureau? So you now have an edge over your customers because you can provide parts quicker. So you retain more customers uh, and things like that. There's a cost for getting parts completed quicker um, that needs to be identified. Chemical costs, including waste pickup, um, you know, if you're using some type of detergent, it's getting saturated. You have a chemical company come pick it up. There's costs associated with that. And then EHS safety concerns, another big one that's often overlooked. But of course, if you talk to someone from EHS, they probably have a, a dollar amount for you and it's quite uh, expensive. But it's basically, you know, how risky is the machine you're using that you're working on and what's the cost if someone gets hurt? 
right? What's the cost if someone sticks their hand into uh, sodium hydroxide and burns themselves? You know, could be thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how severe that injury could be. That's all something that's within the cost of your, your post printing if it has those EHS safety concerns. So that will kind of give you a quick look specifically at FDM and Polyjet, how people are traditionally cleaning them, some of the biggest expenses associated with that. So now let me dig into what are the benefits of having a system specifically designed for additive, right? Specifically designed for Polyjet and FDM. So I'll start for Polyjet. Um, so this is a, a system here called the Demi, again, specifically designed from the ground up, not only for additive, but specifically for Polyjet. So some of the biggest benefits here is higher throughput. You can reduce that manual labor to from 80 to 100%, which is huge, right? It's no longer just one person in front of one part where they have to blow off support material. They can actually batch dozens, hundreds of parts at once, hit play and walk away, going to something else more profitable for the company. Uh, advanced process controls. So you can control things like ultrasonic temperature and really the agitation that's going on. All that means is much lower breakages, near zero, really. Um, and that's huge. One, it's a cost savings on reprint, but then it also opens up the possibility of new applications to do on your printer. I see it time and again, there are certain parts that you can print on the printer, and then companies just won't do it because they know it will never get cleaned without breaking. So they just straight up don't do that application. Now you have a system specifically designed for polyjet support removal. You're having near zero breakages. It opens up all these opportunities of new things you can print on the printer and have a usable part. Uh, minimize operator error. Again, because this is designed for additive, uh, we have the ability to save and store recipes. So now there's no more of that tribal knowledge, right? You could have someone be their first day on the job. And if they use a system like this, they're going to get the same quality and consistent part out as someone who's run it for years. And then sustainability, which is huge for like EHS, right? Anyone who's used a water jet, and if you're over six feet like myself, you know how painful it can be. You know, your wrists hurt because you're crouched over, your back hurts. There's injuries associated with that long term. But if you have something that's automated where you hit play and walk away, now there's not those repetitive motion injuries that you can see um, from doing those manual tasks. Here's a quick case study we have just to kind of highlight that point. Uh, this is with Proto Labs. If you're not familiar, they are one of, if not the biggest service bureau in North America. They do a lot of print technologies, but specifically here we're highlighting their Polyjet um, applications. So they're doing about 90 parts per day. Uh, and when they were water jetting, they had about 40 hours of manual labor per week and then a 12 hour soak time. Switching over to something specifically designed for additive, like the Demi, which I just showed you, they went from 40 hours of manual labor to 20 hours of manual labor. So that's basically going from a full-time employee to a part-time employee or having someone who's full-time go and do something else. And then they're going from 12 hours to eight hours total, um, which is huge. I mean, it's a service, right? They're, they're, they're providing parts to their customer. They're now getting them in their hands quicker. Um, so great application. And I will say specifically for this application, you know, that 40 to 20 hours, that's actually pretty low. Uh, I more often than not see an 80 to 100% reduction in labor, but I know for a fact on the case of Proto Labs, a lot of their parts had a ton of internal geometries. So although they weren't able to get rid of 80% of the labor, they were certainly able to make a huge dent in savings by cutting it in half. Next is FDM. Uh, a system like this, again, specifically designed for FDM support removal. Uh, it's not a soap tank, it's a spray system, which is more conducive to removing supports. Biggest benefits there, faster cycle times. It really is 10 to 12 times faster than waterworks or sodium hydroxide or something like that. So if you have a, uh, if you're soaking parts for 10, 11, 12 hours, you could literally put them in a spray system and they'd be done in under an hour. So now you're getting a part into your customer's hand quicker and the dry time is drastically better because you're no longer soaking the parts. Uh, and then lower part defect. So uh, less warpages, uh, breakages, things like that. Minimize operator errors. Again, saving and storing of recipes. It's someone's first day on the job. They're getting the same cycle times, same consistent results as someone who's been running it for a year. Uh, and then safety. This is actually a huge one. Uh, hands-free chemistry with no mixing and pouring. 
We have intelligent solutions with e stops sensors monitoring. So it can't run in an unsafe condition. Suddenly, all those costs associated with e H and S that they see are a thing of the past, right? Because it's specifically designed to be safer specifically to be designed to be used for additive. Um, here's a case study we did with Toro. I actually really like this one. This really highlights the benefit of, of a spray system. But FDM uh, or Toro, they have a, a F900 and they had a specific part that was almost the full envelope of the 900 uh, in length. And it was basically looked like a gas can. So there was a little hole at the top and then it was chock full of support material on the inside. This little gas can literally took 96 hours to soak to remove supports and about six hours of labor. So they would pull it out every so often in this homemade tank that they had with sodium hydroxide. And then someone would take like a, uh, a knife and scrape out the soft material, the soft uh, support material, and then stick it back in the tank. So 96 hours of soaking, six hours of labor. They switched over to a spray system and they went from 96 hours to six and a half hours. And they went from six hours of labor to 15 minutes. So this was huge. And for these guys, because they're doing a lot of product development, it's getting to market faster with that solution, literally saving days of time. So uh, hopefully that gave you kind of a, a more in-depth look at, okay, if you, if you have a system specifically designed for additives, specifically designed for your print technology, where are the savings and the cost benefits there from switching over from those traditional methods? The final thing I want to talk about is the future. What does switching to those design systems for additive do in the future of the industry, especially as regards to the digital thread? For those of you who've been in the industry or you've gone to any of the shows, you know what I mean by the digital thread or industry 4.0, right? It's this thing that not only additive wants to do, but any factory floor, any business, right? They want to monitor everything that's going on on the factory floor send up those metrics to the cloud and run some types of analytics, right? To be leaner, meaner, me, uh, to be more efficient. Printing's no different. And as you look at the part design and the part print phase, they're already well suited to be in this industry 4.0 to get things up into the cloud, right? Part design that happens on a computer already. Uh, the print side with the printers of today, right? They have an ethernet port, you just plug right in, very easy to integrate into third-party software. But with those traditional ways I highlighted of doing post printing, there, there's a break, right? A water jet does not have an ethernet port on it. Uh, the SCA tank does not have Wi-Fi. You can't pull anything out of that and put that into the cloud to run analytics. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you're switching to systems that were designed for additive and really designed for the future of additive, now you can integrate in there. So those systems I just showed you for PolyJet and for FDM, they have, um, Ethernet ports on them. You can connect to your plant network. You can connect to your laptop. You can do remote monitoring. You can pull off metrics. Um, you can speak some of the most common protocols to get to third party software um, solutions. And you're really getting that end to end automation and closing the loop in intelligence, right? You're able to, to design on the design side for the post printing and the printing. Same thing on the print side, right? It's designed to be printed so you have a, a faster post print. Um, and really giving you that that end to end intelligence to become more efficient. Just something you're missing with those kind of those traditional ways to clean parts um, that aren't really set up for this industry 4.0 that we keep seeing coming. So that was everything I wanted to share with you guys today. Hopefully that gave you a pretty good idea of what's going on in the industry, why post printing in general is becoming a bottleneck why it's a bottleneck specifically for FDM and PolyJet, uh, but what are those huge advantages and cost savings to moving to a solution specifically designed for 3D printing and your print technology?